viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. NIA files charge sheet against three Lashkar operatives in online recruitment module case. Deadly blast on eve of US pullout shatters poor Afghan families' dreams. And Indian security forces eliminate three terrorists of Al Badr terror outfit in encounter. The drastic advances in digital and communication technologies have acted as the pillars of our modern society. Alongside with the internet, mass media and social media outlets have facilitated the processes of globalization, removing any previously perceived geographical barriers. Yet, the very same mechanisms have also been recognized by terrorist organizations and exploited in the pursuit of their objectives. In India, Pakistan-based terror groups have been continuously using social media for recruitment and radicalization. Recently, India's counter-strategy task force NIA filed a charge sheet against three operatives of the lashkar e taiba in the online recruitment module case. Our report. The National Investigation Agency recently filed the first supplementary charge sheet against three lashkar e taiba operatives, including a missing Pakistani woman, in an online recruitment case registered last year in West Bengal. The charge sheet was filed in the NIA Special Court in Kolkata against Tania Parveen Sayyid M. Idris and a missing accused Aisha. The case was initially registered on March 18 last year at the Baduria Police Station in Bengal's North 24 Parganas district following the arrest of Parveen, a member of the proscribed Pakistan-based terrorist organization. Parveen was a college student and was radicalized and recruited in cyberspace by Pakistan-based cadres of L.E.T. She was co-admin of various social media groups espousing secessionist ideas on Kashmir with accused Aisha, a Pakistan-based cadre of L.E.T.'s women's wing. Parveen and other accused were brainwashing impressionable youth and propagating the ideology of L.E.T., thus conspiring to wage war against the state. One should note that terrorist organizations like other organizations across the world always use every means possible for exploiting the space for their own ends. In the case of terrorist organizations, cyberspace was a medium which they have been very active for the past decade or so and today with the social media and other media coming on board, this medium has been completely exploited by them for their own nefarious ends. The Pakistan-backed terror groups like lashkar e taiba through its political arm jamaat ud dawa and more precisely, its cyber unit called JUD Cyber Team are using social media channels to attract young men. According to intelligence reports, fake videos of alleged atrocities committed by security forces and building a false narrative are now often used by the ISI handlers from Pakistan to whip up emotions among the young recruits. In January 2021, two terrorists arrested in Kashmir were provided training online using various links available on public platforms like YouTube and were receiving orders as well as religious teachings from Pakistan-based handler Burhan Hamza. Earlier, 22-year-old Amir Siraj, a final-year graduation student from Khwaja Gilgad in support, was also recruited online by Jash Muhammad. He was later gunned down during an encounter between terrorists and security forces. Youths can be very easily influenced by new ideas and new ideologies. They do not have the experience and the exposure of what these actual impact of the new ideas and ideologies can be in the real world. Thus, terrorist groups and other extremist organizations try to influence the youth and wean them away from the mainstream path to the, towards their cause. Also, the youth can be very useful as the soldiers of a terrorism organi terrorist organization. From the expansion of extremist groups and their worldwide recruitment policies, it has become evident that the threat of terrorism is not restricted to its region of origin anymore. 
the mass use of internet and social media has obscured the borders of extremism and has imposed an undeniable menace to global peace. Terrorist organizations are now invading the cyberspace and turning it into a battleground. They no longer rely on military force such as weapons, armors and bombs only. Instead, they have become more and more savvy and their strategies and tactics have gained technological orientation. Hence, when terrorist groups do innovate with fundraising and recruitment, efforts to counter the financing of terrorism must also change with the times. The United States has begun its pullout from Afghanistan, the forever war that started after the 9-11 attacks on Twin Towers in New York 20 years ago. The development has elicited mixed reactions as there are widespread fears among the Afghan about possible Taliban takeover of the country. Recently, the Taliban rejected President Joe Biden's announcement that troops would stay on past the deadline but withdraw over the next four and a half months. The deadline has been met with a surge in violence with a car bomb in Logar province killing at least 27 people, including students. We take a look. On the eve of a symbolic date for America's withdrawal from Afghanistan, a huge car laden with explosives blew up outside a guest house in Logar province of Afghanistan, killing at least 27 people. The blast struck province's capital of Pule Alam when the people in the guest house were breaking their fast during the Islamic holy month of Ramadan. Among those who died in the blast, at least 21 were school students who had travelled to Loga for the exams and the deadly blast crushed the dreams of several families seeking a better future for their children. I was at my tailor shop with others and we wanted to break our fast when suddenly a blast took place and shattered all the doors and windows of my shop. And I don't remember what happened next. Violence in Afghanistan has escalated in recent weeks after US President Joe Biden announced that the Washington would withdraw troops by September 11. That decision angered the Taliban, who had signed a deal with previous US President Donald Trump that specified troops would be gone from the country by May 1, although the United States did not meet the May 1 withdrawal deadline, agreed in talks with the Taliban last year. Its pullout has begun. President Biden's decision is fueling fears that Afghanistan could plunge into an all-out civil war that could return the Taliban to power. Those concerns have been stoked by a deadlock in US-backed peace talks while the Taliban have intensified attacks on government forces after a missed deadline for the US troop departure. Recently, at least seven Afghan military personnel were killed when the Taliban set off explosives smuggled through a tunnel they had dug into an army outpost in southwestern Farah province. We're the witness and we, we have observed that uh, the number of attacks increased and uh, then the terrorist groups uh, strengthened. This is the, the consequences that we are not stable, nothing is stable here, politically, economically and uh, security, from a security point of view. We are not in a stable situation and every day the fear increases among the public and uh, we are very concerned about our own security. The U.S. National Intelligence Council report recently released an assessment that the Taliban would roll back much of the progress made in Afghan women's rights if the Islamist extremists regain national power. It's the latest U.S. warning of the consequences of the Afghan withdrawal now underway. There are persistent fears that the U.S. has negotiated with the Taliban on an exit from Afghanistan. Women will be stripped of rights or once again be forced to wear a burqa, the all-encompassing wheels that became the symbol of Taliban rule. A compromise with the Taliban will endanger the gains achieved since 2001, including the protection of minorities and freedom of expression. The Afghan peace process is fragile and its failure may lead to more conflict and misery for the country. Thus, it is an opportunity and if it is progresses well, 
it can pave a path to durable peace. Let's now talk about Ban Khalistani outfit seeks for justice, which is minting the misery of the COVID-19 patients in India. It is trying to increase the number of its followers amidst the coronavirus pandemic by promising them cash and oxygen. Since the inception of its referendum 2020 propaganda, Sikhs for Justice has been trying to lure the people of Punjab with monetary rewards, citing various socio-economic issues like the farmer protest and COVID-19. Our report. The outlawed pro-Khalistan group Sikhs for Justice is indulging in what officials called an oxygen conspiracy. According to Punjab officials, Sikhs for Justice is trying to fish in troubled waters to increase its followers in the border state. Over two dozen calls have been tracked down that show Gurbatwan Singh Pannu's organization promising Rs 3,000 to Punjab COVID-19 patients in need of oxygen. US-based Gurbatwan Singh Pannu has been designated as terrorist by India as he is running a secessionist agenda to curb out a separate state of Punjab from India. Pannu has announced that Sikhs for Justice will provide oxygen money of Rs 3,000 to each Covid patient in Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal and Punjab. Moreover, the organization has also launched a website for registration to get the amount. So concerns remain. Uh, how they are to be addressed, I think, is already being done by um, uh, by the Indian security forces, by the political establishment, and by the intelligence agencies. But it is going to be a long, drawn-out battle, and uh, I feel the battle lines are drawn, and we will see as to how it goes from here. Six for Justice was banned on July 10, 2019, by India under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act for Anti-India Activities. After the COVID-19 pandemic broke out last year, the organization's Gurpatwan Singh Pannu has made several statements targeting the Indian government. In the garb of helping people with monetary rewards, Sikhs for Justice has been collecting personal data of people by asking them to register on different web portals to use this data for its referendum 2020 agenda. If anyone fills the form, the data is collected and used to show the support his group has from Indians. They have launched multiple websites with a similar form to attract the people of Punjab. However, the Indian administration has banned these websites. Recently, Sikhs for Justice also launched a web portal for the people of West Bengal and Maharashtra to declare the independence of West Bengal and Maharashtra from the Union of India. Our visit is very strong. There is stability in Punjab and revival of Sikh militancy is almost chances are almost zero. However, if there is potentially any instability in Punjab or elsewhere in the country, they could be exploited by Pakistan and anti-Indian organizations based in UK, America, Canada, Germany, Italy, Australia, New Zealand and elsewhere. The Sikh community across India have rejected the idea of Khalistan. Various organizations in Punjab have already condemned the referendum 2020 by the pro-Khalistan outfit Sikhs for Justice and call for strict action against those propagating anti-India movement. Khalistani secessionists like Pannu are mere cannon fodder for ISI, which has been promoting Khalistani agenda for years. Although a huge force and money is being pushed in to destroy the youth and hamper peace in India, Assertive vigilance and several crackdowns leading to multiple arrests have been able to contain the anti-India activities happening at the commands of Islamabad. Last year, Kashmir Valley witnessed widespread anti-terror operations that resulted in the killing of the highest number of terrorists. The same success story of Indian security forces is being repeated this year as terrorists in the valley are suffering huge losses with the killing of their commanders. The recent spurt in encounters and arrest of terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir is taking the counterinsurgency operations to the next level. Recently, security forces in valley neutralized three terrorists belonging to Al Badra group. Three terrorists were killed after an encounter broke out between security forces and terrorists in Shopian district of Jammu and Kashmir. 
The terrorists were shot dead after they refused to surrender and opened fire on being trapped and surrounded in the Kanigam area of the district. According to the Kashmir Zone Police, one terrorist identified as Tawseef Ahmed surrendered to the security forces. He was among the newly recruited local terrorists of Al Badr terror outfit trapped in the encounter. Recently, a top Lashkar commander involved in the killing of two councillors in March this year was also neutralized by security forces in Jammu and Kashmir. A large quantity of arms and ammunition was also recovered from them. With such successful operations, one after another, the entire ecosystem of terrorists across the Kashmir Valley has come to a standstill. The time India has abrogated Article 370, the grip of Indian administration over the uh, politics and the uh, dynamics of Jammu and Kashmir have grown stronger. And this is what is uh, creating a great nervousness into the enemy's camp. They want, they always wanted to keep control over the reins uh, 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 that, uh, that dictate the environment in the valley uh, in their favor. But now the things are changing. The environment is slowly and steadily getting towards uh, the democratic side of uh, uh, the mainstream India. And this is the reason why these terrorists were getting into the Indian territory to uh, create a mayhem uh, in the uh, local body elections of DDC, uh, which uh, Pakistan sees as a great challenge to whatever they have achieved so far in this proxy war of more than 30 years. Pakistan seems to be frustrated with this crackdown on terror. Hence, Pakistan-backed terror groups like Al Badr are continuously attempting to disrupt peace in the valley, but the vigilant security forces are successfully preventing every possible attack. Recently, police arrested two terrorists and three associates of Al Badr outfit and seized arms and ammunition in North Kashmir's Kupwara district. On one hand, Pakistan is desperate to push in terrorists in the valley and on the other hand, it is attempting to disrupt communal harmony in the region. The terrorists backed by the Pakistan forces are misusing religious places like mosques to carry out attacks in Jammu and Kashmir. Such instances were also noted during the recent attack in Shopian, where terrorists were holed up inside the Jama Masjid. These kinds of tactics make it difficult for the security forces to carry out the operation. The misuse of these religious places, masjids and mosques by the militants is a very, very thought out strategy by the Pakistan ISI and Pakistan government, Pakistan army. They have given instructions to their uh, militant cadres that whenever you are faced with any of uh, such coordinate search operations or any security forces who are coming there, you should immediately rush to the mosque and take shelter over there. And then from the mosque, use their loudspeaker PA system and try to rouse passions amongst the public, They're telling them that, look, their mosque is under attack, their religious sentiments are under attack, and they should come out in support of the military. Indian security forces have successfully managed to burst various strategies of terror in Kashmir. However, despite the best efforts of the security forces, some challenges still remain. At a time of increased vigil on the border, terror group chiefs from the other side are trying desperately to find new means to smuggle guns into the valley. The other challenge is to gradually dismantle all support and sympathy for Pakistan-based terror groups in the valley. This would be the final phase of counter-insurgency operations one that would need more time and sustained efforts. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsanin.com. This is Yeshi signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.